Okay. Uh, thanks for coming, and I hope everyone can hear me despite my uh, funny voice. Uh, today we'll talk about uh, SPM, uh, Scalable Performance Monitoring Solution that we built at Sematext for monitoring um, Elasticsearch, HBase, Solar, and some other technologies at a large scale. Since we have only 20 minutes, the agenda will be pretty short. Uh, if you have, if I didn't go deep enough into some things during the talk, uh, please stop by it. We have a booth and we can, I can show you everything that I'll be talking about now uh, in a live demo. So introduction first, then the ar overall architecture of SPM, uh, then we'll uh, go through the key components of SPM backends, uh, the things that, things that we've built uh, that process uh, performance metrics data, uh, all the way to the front end. Uh, I'll share some quote unquote lessons that we've learned or at least observations that we've made. Interesting metrics we probably uh, will not uh, look at, uh, but I do have some one graph because somebody told me that graphs are really important to people like that. Uh, so I just added one. Uh, if you want to see interesting metrics for any of these specific solutions, I can again show you uh, that at the booth. Uh, some of you know me as a Lucene guy or a solar guy, and I've indeed been uh, associated with them since their beginnings. Uh, I'm also the co-author of Lucene in Action, and now some of you may know me as a person who uh, runs Sematex, a, a small company headquartered in New York uh, that does uh, products and services around search and um, uh, data analytics using some of the technologies that you see here. With a tiny company, really under 10 people, but despite the, uh, despite the small size, we have some uh, big uh, clients, some startups, some really tiny uh, clients. Uh, we, over, we are in a bunch of different countries, continents, time zones, and um, we're looking to grow, obviously, but we're pretty young and small still. Uh, SPM stands for Scalable Performance Monitoring, not Sematext or Search Performance Monitoring. And what it is, is a multi-tenant application performance uh, monitoring SaaS. We've built it using some of these big uh, data technologies, uh, HBIS, uh, Hadoop, and Flume. Uh, and also, also some technologies that have been around before the big data term was coined, like Jetty and Esper. Uh, it, we did not build it using any search technologies used for search, although some of the monitoring is obviously targeted uh, at p people who, who need to monitor their search clusters, as well as HBase and few things, other things that we'll add support for. It runs on Amazon Cloud, and you can, um, you can get it if you want uh, free. Um, these are, this is core functionality. Uh, it, uh, SPM allows you to um, pick any time range and look at performance metrics for any time range. Um, there are currently no limitation in terms of how long you can keep your data. Uh, the performance metrics don't lose precision over time, like in some monitoring uh, tools. Uh, if you look at historical data, then the, the, the Metrics are no longer precise. That's not the case here. Um, because of how we process data, uh, you can slice and dice uh, the metric uh, data using a number of different filters. And these filters depend on what you're monitoring. For instance, in solar, there's a notion of a core. So you can filter by core. But you cannot do that, obviously, in HBase that doesn't have that. Um, you can compare it to periods. You have integrated alerts uh, that you can set on any metric that, uh, that we monitor. And um, so you don't need a separate uh, alerting system. Uh, you can get email reports. Uh, you, can uh, you can monitor more than one thing. Um, and uh, we'll ha add some uh, um, support for adding uh, to, to up of applying a arithmetic expressions to uh, data, the metric data in the next release. So here's the bird's eye view the overall, of the overall architecture. On the left, these green boxes are the, you can see that I think, yeah, servers that are being monitored. Inside is a purple uh, box that's the application that's being monitored. And inside the application is a little agent, the blue oval thing um, that collects performance metrics. Outside of it, is a sender, a separate process that sends us, obviously, uh, the data. Uh, and everything on the left is what runs on, on 
people's servers, and there are obviously a number of these servers and applications out there that are, that are sending us data. Uh, the blue rectangle is called a receiver. You probably can't read it. This is the thing that gets the data. And the uh, yellow boxes are Flume uh, collectors, one of which stores the data in HBase and the other one that, um, that's used for alerts. And I'll, I'll go into each of these pieces in subsequent slides. But then there is a um, HBase cluster, and uh, finally uh, the UI where uh, the pulls data out of HBase uh, efficiently and shows it in graphs and so on. Sorry, this PDF looks a little funny. The, the diagrams didn't look, come out nice. So the agent is an in-JVM process. Uh, it, its job is to collect performance metrics from whichever source the application uh, uses to expose the metrics. In case of uh, HBase and Solar, that's uh, JMX. In case of uh, Elasticsearch, we use HTTP API that uh, Elasticsearch has to suck out all kinds of numbers. Uh, the thing that's not shown in the picture is this thing called Collect D. It's a small and very uh, low footprint daemon uh, open source piece that's been around for many years, whose job is to collect uh, metrics for, we use it at least for system uh, metrics. It also has, uh, I think, over 50 plugins that will monitor anything from databases to file systems. Um, the, the sender piece is a separate process, like I said, and it not only sends the data, it actually uh, first collects it and buffers it locally before sending it. Uh, so what it does is it uses Flume and the tail functionality of Flume to tail some files uh, that are produced by the agent and by CollectD. Uh, these files contain numbers, metrics, I don't know, CPU, load two, that sort of stuff. And uh, like I said, buffer is it locally. This buffer is done, buffering is done so that uh, the data is not lost in case there is some issue be, uh, with sending data to the receiver. DNS, network, on our end, if something is wrong, the data will not be lost. Uh, I should also say that uh, in some cases, the agent uh, does some bytecode uh, instrumentation to get uh, to numbers, to performance numbers that um, applications being monitored don't actually expose. Uh, concretely, in case of solar, uh, we can break down the latency of requests by different what are called search components in Solar, so you can see where the bottleneck, bottleneck is. Is it, uh, is it querying? Is it uh, faceting or something else? Um, and this is, this is what you have to do on the client side if you were to actually uh, uh, get this. You, so you install CollectD, apt-get or, or yum, uh, you run an installer, uh, that's in a zip file that you download, then you add some JVM parameters, you restart the process that you're monitoring, like your region server or your HBase master or Elasticsearch or Solar. And, uh, and that's it. A few moments later, you should see your performance graphs. And at the end of the presentation, I have a graph that I can show you so you can see what things look like. This sender piece is started actually by itself. You don't actually need to uh, start it yourself. The next piece is the receiver which is uh, something that runs inside of uh, Jetty in our case. And it's sitting behind Apache, but really it could be sitting behind anything, or it, it wouldn't, doesn't have to be sitting in, in behind anything either. Keep alive, I'll mention later, the important, it turns out, in our case. Um, the receiver simply uh, writes anything that it gets to a file. From there, the two collector pro Flume collector processes, uh, again, tail the files and process them in different ways. The HBase sync, um, for those of you who are here for the previous talk, uh, the HBase sync uses uh, HBase HUD to do some uh, pre-aggregation of metrics in a, in a small buffer to, to reduce the number of puts to, to, this, uh, to HBase. And uh, it, this works well. And also to make it possible to have some aggregates, um, aggregated metrics which are used by the UI uh, for rendering graphs in the database very quickly as opposed to just putting in raw data and then periodically produce, um, aggregating it with, with say, MapReduce job. Uh, the second uh, uh, Flume collector is a custom-built uh, Flume sync that uses Esper, a uh, complex event uh, processing framework uh, that's been around for many years. Uh, and this allows us to uh, build alerts 
uh, a functionality that says if, I don't know, CPU load is over two for more than 15 minutes, uh, send an alert, that sort of stuff. The age base um, cluster has a, a couple of tables. One of them is the raw table. Uh, this is where it's simply anything that the receiver gets and what it gets are basically lines of, of metrics. One line is a, a metric data point. It's, that's stored in this raw table. Uh, and it's used for, as a, an input to aggregation. Uh, we also have an aggregate uh, table with aggregate aggregates, and uh, the aggregates are either um, produced on the fly um, or they are uh, or they're processed in MapReduce. Whichever uh, bit gets to un unaggregated data first uh, pro aggregates them. Um, underneath this aggregations is actually something we've built that's very generic that um, allows you to define how, you, how, what and how you want to aggregate, uh, which allows us to very easily um, add new reports, either for existing systems or uh, for new systems. You can also define what, what sorts of uh, reports you need based on uh, metrics that you know you're collecting and dimensions uh, that you have. Uh, and it, this can process very large data sets, uh, either f with data stored either, no, either on HDFS or HBase. Um, on the front end, we have a, a ton of uh, JavaScript, as you can imagine. I use uh, jQuery a lot and Flot. Some people have asked me what Flot, Flot is. I thought that was a known thing, but it's actually at this point kind of old. It's a JavaScript, uh, JavaScript library for creating graphs. When uh, we started, this seemed like, that seemed like a good choice, uh, but the community, although large, it's kind of split and it didn't quite uh, work out. And um, so we thought about using High Charts, which is uh, another library that's commercial, but relatively inexpensive, done by a person from Norway. But now there's D3, uh, which seems much nicer and uh, that will probably migrate to because it allows for creation of graphs as, a, as well as other types of vis visualizations. It's free and actually Riley's writing a, a book on it that's going to be out uh, soon. The filters that I mentioned earlier, uh, we have some that are generic or rather pr they're present in all um, in UI regardless of what you're monitoring. So. You can all, always filter by time, or rather you can specify you know, time ranges. You can filter by one or more hosts, or all of them. Uh, same thing for a JVMs. If you're monitoring multiple uh, processes on the same server, you may want to filter by the JVM that you want to monitor. And then, in the last, in case of solar, we can, you can filter things by request handler or core, uh, and you can read the rest. Uh, the point here is that what you select in the UI is used to construct uh, an efficient re request, a request to um, HBase uh, that's processed very efficiently, and this is where the uh, the structure of uh, keys in HBase comes in, and how we've structured them to make these requests very uh, fast. Oh, this is the graph that I said that would said to somebody I would put in. So this is just an example. You can see a bunch of graphs uh, outside of the booth. This concretely shows um, Elasticsearch cluster and uh, well, Elasticsearch cluster indexing uh, tweets. That this is something we've put together last week before the, before the presentation, before coming to Berlin. It just indexes tweets and deletes uh, all tweets. So that's why you can see multiple lines and bars here. Uh, these are just a few numbers. We we're pretty young. Uh, the services has not been uh, really publicized, so we get over ten. Th oh, sorry, over a thousand data points per second, roughly. Now, the cluster, that the age base part is uh, pretty small, and we have um, many billions of rows now. I uh, don't know exactly how many, but uh, at some point, I think it was in March or April, the number popped out. Uh, from somewhere, and I think it was 8.2 or 8.9 billion rows or something like that, of these raw rows. And of course, there are fewer aggregate rows. That's the idea. Uh, lessons, if you can call them lessons, is that EC2 is basically slow, which we know. Uh, it also 
is impossible to benchmark because of noisy neighbors. You never know what you, what kind of neighbor you're going to get. And we recent, recently um, moved one of the pieces of, of SPM from a small instance to a large, sorry, to medium EC2 instance. And we thought, okay, this will give us two two times the improvement because that's what you're supposed to get. It turns out it gave us, I don't know, 20 times the improvement. And I'm guessing that's because of that small instance, which has been up forever. Well, you know, we had a bunch of uh, really crazy noisy neighbors. And there's no way to tell. We've also experimented with spot instances, pr uh, primarily for testing things. And uh, yeah, I guess it, it's not a surprise if you go and read uh, about this, if you do research, but yeah, the prices of these spot instances spike over the price of the on-demand instances. So you really cannot count on them. They just disappear and everything that you've had on them just goes away. So you, can re you really have to use it for something that you don't really care about like short-lived testing, maybe. Swappiness, um, I, I have a feeling people of, often overlook this. Um, and I, I think it's not well known, but swappiness is a property, a Linux property that tells uh, Linux how aggressively to uh, swap things out of, of memory. And basically, in the uh, case of the servers, you want to set it to zero, by the default it's set to 60. Um, and in our case, that made a big difference in terms of how much some of the small instances that we were using were swapping. We set it to zero, uh, cleared the swap, and after that, there was no swapping. I have to rush, because I have only a few minutes. Similarly, number of open, uh, maximum number of open file descriptors, don't be afraid to set it high. People sometimes ask, how high can you go? I don't actually know how high you can go. I think it depends on how you compile, I think how you compile the kernel, but uh, I've seen systems, and we have some systems with this number set to 200,000. Default is 1,024, which is often very low. Keep alive's are important for us uh, because I think by default they're set to 15 seconds, which means if in our case, if the sender sends a request to send us uh, metrics, 15 seconds later the connection will be closed. And if, and like in our case, if we send uh, metrics every minute, then Every time uh, the sender connects, it's going to have to open a new connection. That's inefficient. And this proved uh, uh, to work well. We've also built something um, called uh, some search analytics product, products that's very different in nature. And there we had to set keep alive to three seconds or something like that. Um, otherwise, you could not handle the load that people were hitting us with. Um, HBase WD is an open source project that uh, came, that we open sourced as a part of this uh, work that helps you avoid uh, cases where you may hotspot the region by say by using poor keys. Um, HBase Hut uh, makes it fast to do uh, to add data to HBase as a po and, and just write and periodically uh, merge things that were written as opposed to updating existing rows. Uh, use async HBase, it's uh, faster than the default uh, HBase client called HTable, that's a class in HBase. Uh, the bottom URL has some nice looking graphs that show you exactly how, how much faster it is. It's, it's done by the guy who is the author, but I think he did uh, you know, an objective job. Uh, the results of a survey that, that shows us uh, that show us that peop lots of people don't monitor their um, solar or elastic search clusters or have homegrown tools for that. We'll skip interesting metrics. You can see them downstairs. Um, we'll skip this. Basically, I think uh, the, what we've built ends up covering a bunch of these points. Um, and we're hiring. Uh, and if you have any questions, this is the contact information, or you can ask now. Or downstairs. I'll be downstairs. Thank you. <laughs>